talked about waves, we've talked about wavelengths and period and frequency and the speed of the wave. We talked a little bit about sound waves, but we should spend at least some time just discussing electromagnetic waves, or as physicists call them, light waves. Most people don't call them that. They think they're, there's the stuff you can see, and then there are these other things called radio waves and uh, x-rays, but they're all the same thing. The only difference is that they have different wavelengths. They're all what's called electromagnetic waves. An electromagnetic wave is produced by a simple harmonic motion. You just take a, you take a charged particle, you know, like an electron. You know, if you had two electrons here, this electron and this electron, this electron could feel this guy. And if this electron moved up, this one would feel that change. So if I took an electron and I moved it up and down, this would feel that fluctuating change. It's an electromagnetic wave. The faster the charges move, uh, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency of the wave. Antennas are just long conductors, so you can run electrons up and down and create waves and send them out. If I, if I had a wave, if I had, a, if I had an antenna and I started jiggling the electrons in a certain way, then they'd send out a wave that would look just like that, except light travels much faster than you and I can imagine. It, it would take light um, 186,000 miles a second. It takes light about uh, thousands of a second to go from Seattle to Portland. 300,000 kilometers a second. It's very fast. All the light waves, whether they be visible or not, in a vacuum they travel at 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. 300,000 kilometers a second doesn't matter what the wavelength is. They all travel the same speed. Uh, check this out. This is, a, this is the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, just a rough, rough thing. Here's, here are the long wavelengths. Here are the short wavelengths. And somewhere in, right in here is this little, just a tiny swath of wavelength ranges that our eyes can pick up. They're just designed to it. And, they, and the way we perceive them in our brain is we perceive this is red, and shorter wavelength is yellow, shorter wavelength green, blue, violet, or red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, Roy G. Bibb. It's the standard spectrum, but it's just a small fraction of the total electromagnetic spectrum. There's stuff out here we can't see called ultraviolet. It's above violet, higher frequency. Bees can see in the ultraviolet. And not all the way into it, but pretty far into it. There are a lot of things that, uh, well, the flowers that bees pollinate, they look pretty boring to us because we can't see in the infrared. Other, in the, inf I mean, in the ultraviolet. In the ultraviolet, they're very inviting. Other animals, snakes, for example, some see in the infrared. They see below the red, at lower frequencies in the red. Down here, we've got radio waves, um, long radio waves. We can get into Shorter waves get into AM radio, shorter waves still FM, shorter waves still uh, TV. Uh, we get into microwaves, which are millionths of a meter on that order. Uh, and then we get into infrared radiation, which you've heard about it. It's just below the red. It's longer wavelengths than the red. We get into uh, higher frequencies. As we go past the blue, we can't see. We get into ultraviolet, and then X-rays, and then gamma rays. You'll notice that as you move up, the, uh, the photons, the particles of light that make up the waves, they get, uh, they get more dangerous. You know, visible light doesn't hurt you at all, but you know ultraviolet can give you a sunburn. And the, U the UVBs, instead of the UVAs, shorter frequency, they can kill you. And shorter than that is X-rays, and you know those aren't good for you. And gamma rays, very deadly. So the wavelength and the frequency is associated with the energy of the photon. I'm going to say photon, I'm going to say wave. Light is considered as a particle and as a wave. It's got both properties. Uh, as you get down to the very small in the quantum size objects, what's a particle and what's a wave becomes very hard to determine, mostly because we don't have a, an analogy in our real world, in our size world, to explain it. We're just not familiar with it. But we'll talk about it in both ways. So here's the deal. Energy of a photon, and I'm going to call that E for energy and pH for 
photon, a little subscript there. And the energy of a photon is something called Planck's constant. It's just this constant. I'll give it to you in a minute. Times the frequency. So shoot, if I if I increase the frequency, the energy of the photon goes up, which makes sense because the shorter, fre higher frequencies, shorter wavelengths have more energy. When we're talking about light, instead of velocity as frequency times wavelength, we use c. C is the speed of light in a vacuum. And so I could say, well, let's see, Planck's constant is Planck's constant times frequency and energy of a photon. Well, let's see, frequency would be C over lambda. So I can say, I can tell you about the energy of a photon in terms of the frequency or the wavelength lambda. And I'll write that down. C is 3.0 times 2.99 something times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And h, that's the speed of light in a vacuum. h is Planck's constant. After a guy named Planck, um, 1900, uh, wrote uh, one of the first very important quantum mechanics papers. Planck's constant, and he came up with this constant to explain what was going on. And it's about uh, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. So let's do an example with all this in here. Mm, let's figure out, let's figure out the number of photons uh, leaving a 100 watt bulb every second. Let's try this. Uh, 